Hallelujah. Welcome everyone to Arise Company where we help people find life, enjoy life, and win in life. We have been healing month. Healing month was last month, but um, every one of my messages has gone double than I had planned for the month. So here we are in December. Healing month is continuing. Glory to God. Today, this will be part four, um, uh, even though it's... Um, um, Probably the, the each, 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 each part has gone two, two services long, so, so we're into a different, a different series part number, but um, uh, I actually have four titles. And so we talked about breaking through to our healing, uh, we talked about when we were kicking over some sacred cows, and then we talked about the spirit of faith. And then um, we were talking about um, the three key elements um, for our healing. And we talked about those three things. Remember those three things? Patience, um, establishing our heart, and grumble not. Three keys to, to obtaining and enjoying our healing. Um, we're not patient and we don't establish our hearts and we grumble. Uh, we, we shut ourselves off from healing, from the health, uh, the, the healing power of God. Uh, the resurrection power has a hard time working in our bodies when we are grumbling and complaining. Uh, so it's important that we um, learn those three keys, very vital keys, which a lot of people don't know. Um, you know, and so we needed to get those um, out. Uh, today we want to talk about what I call FF and BB. F, F, and B, B. What is that? Well, um, the faith fight. Or we could call it the, the believing battle. The faith fight or the believing battle. F, F, and B, B. Whatever one you want to choose. Because that's, that's, you know, sometimes we call it the faith fight. Or, you know, the fight the good fight of faith. And people go, yes, amen. And, you know, they walk out the door and they have no idea what that means. I don't know, whatever that means. Um, but uh, when we say the believing battle, you know, there's a battle. When we choose to believe something, there is a battle. The battle's on. Uh, when, we choose, when we say we believe something, uh, when we choose to have faith in God and what He has said, uh, there's going to be a fight. There's going to be a battle. So, let's go ahead and turn to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. And let's just start here. There is a battle. The Christian life is not for wimps. The Christian life is not for weak wimps. Hallelujah. The Lord gives us strength, but um, we're going to have to have some tenacity about us. So, starting in verse 10, Ephesians 6, verse 10 says this Finally, my brethren. Now, the word brethren. Um, is the word the, uh, from the same womb. So it, it's literally, I, I use the word family. You know, because if he's talking to the boys, then it's all brothers. But I mean, if he's talking to the brothers and the sisters, I like to use the word family. So he says, Finally, brethren, or family, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God so that you might be able to stand against the works, the wiles, the strategies of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you might be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore having, your, um, uh, having girded your waist with truth. Putting, um, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer or all kinds of prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful unto this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. So, let's back up. Verse 10, finally. So he's been teaching them on um, some very 
um, basic and advanced things throughout the book of Ephesians, writing to the Ephesians, the Apostle Paul, by the Spirit of God. And now he's about to conclude, he's about to wrap up, and he says, finally, finally, I'm going to start to, to wind things up, wind this letter up that he's written to them. And he said, finally, brethren or family, listen, what I want you to be is strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I don't want you to just be strong in you. I don't want your dependence and your faith and your confidence just to be in you, your education, your ability, your strength, all your, all your assets. No, no, no. He said, I want you to be strong in the Lord. This is a book about knowing who we are in Christ, not just who we are, who we are in Christ, where we have been seated. And he says, listen, I, I want you to be strong in the Lord. I want you to draw your strength, your ability from Him. We can be strong in us, we can understand our strengths, but we need to understand our weaknesses. And always look to Him. Our faith and our confidence is in Him. Be strong in the Lord. And he says, don't just be strong in the Lord, but also in the power of His might. Now the word power is the word authority. It's not power as in a flexed muscle, it's the word authority. Because He has the power. He is the power. He said, I want you to be strong in the Lord and in the authority of His might. I want you to learn how to function and operate as ambassadors of the kingdom. He says, I, I want you to understand authority, because I want you to function and operate in my authority that I have given you. He says, I've got the power, but you need to understand that power only backs authority. And if you understand authority, then the power will operate. Be strong in the Lord and in the authority of His might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you might be able to stand against the works, the wiles, and the strategies of the devil. The devil has strategies. He strategizes and he, he makes plans, him and his wicked forces. They have plans. Wiles. Wiles don't necessarily mean a whole lot. You know, the wily, wily coyote. He has strategies and plans, right? And the roadrunner would always get them. They'd backfire on them. But wiles, works, wiles, and strategies. Strategies. The enemy has strategies. And so we must learn We must learn how to stand. See, put on the whole armor of God. Why? So you're able to stand against the works, the wiles, and the strategies of the devil. So, so he has armor. He has clothing for us. The armor of God. The armor of light, the Bible calls it. Being clothed and cloaked in the armor of God. Clothed in his glory. Clothed in his light. Clothed in the armor. Different ways the scripture talks about what we are to be clothed and cloaked in. Hallelujah. Why? So we can stand against the works and the wiles and the strategies of the devil. We do not have to fall. We can continue to stand. Amen. God's plan for us is to stand. Not to be knocked down. If we're knocked down, the Bible gives us, that there's some, the scripture tells us, listen, though I fall, I shall arise. So don't stay down. Amen. Get back up. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's not, let's not fall apart because we fell. Let's not fall apart because we got knocked down. Just get back up. Amen. Shake your head. Keith Moore says this. Keith Moore says, when he was, when he was young, um, he um, was put in karate lessons. 
And he says, this was old school karate. Old school karate. Cement floors. No, no, no fine padding, you know. The, 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 the padding that we have for our kids today, is, you know, we appreciate that. But uh, um, he said, there's none of that. No, this was old school. Cement floors, cold. You were on your knees. You're on the floor. Um, and... Uh, um, He was in a, was he in a fight? Was he in a tournament? And um, I know he shared this, but whether it was a personal testimony, I think he got hit. And, um, you know, blood starts to flow. And um, he just gets up and says, is that all you got? Is that all you got? He says, you want to intimidate your enemy, you just let them give you the best shot. And then you get back up. And you wipe your face. He says, you know, if you're sick, and you're puking your guts out, and you're speaking the word of God, I think that's, that's kind of where the analogy came from. He, you know, because you see in the movies, you know, and they, they wipe the blood. And, but uh, he says, you're in a faith fight. You believe in the word of God. You're speaking, by the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. And then, and then you puke. I mean, you literally, you, do, you just puke and you feel awful. He says, what do you do? What do you do? You get back up. And he said, you wipe the vomit from your mouth and you said, I say, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. Amen. There's just that, this attitude. This attitude. If we fall, we'll arise. We just get back up. He says, how do we get in the victory? The Bible says, you know what? Um... Though we fall seven times, get up eight. And all we've got to do is get up one more time. If, if the devil's going to give you his best shot seven times and then he's done, all you've got to do is get up eight times and you've already got the victory. Amen? Don't let the devil get the best, last shot. Get back up. Amen? Get back up. We see that in Luke chapter 4. The Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted. At his weakest moment, having fasted 40 days, he'd already entered into starvation. And now the devil shows up and says, Hey, why don't you turn that stone into bread? You're hungry. You're hungry. Yeah, I'm hungry, all right. Scripture says he was hungry. But he said, No, no, no. It is written that we not live by bread alone. And then the devil came back. Second time. The devil came back the third time. Jesus just kept attacking him with the word. Slicing him with the sword of the Spirit. And he finally left. Jesus didn't fall. But we've fallen. We've fallen. And the odds are we'll probably fall again. But just get back up. Amen? Isn't that good news? God, God, said that God did not say that we're disqualified because we fell. He said, just get back up. Amen? Repent. Acknowledge. Lord, I, f I apologize. I stepped into fear. I just, you know, I, I, I forgot what you said. I didn't apply what you said. Whatever it might be. To, listen, but I get back up. I apologize. Get back up. Get, ba get back up. Amen? Say, I'm going to get back up. Amen. Glory to God. Though I fall, I shall arise. I shall arise. I shall arise. Hallelujah. I remember when I was a kid, I had that, you know, what, that, that clown. And you'd punch him, and he'd go, Whoa, and he'd come back up. Amen? Boom, boom, come back up. Remember that? Hallelujah. I don't know what they were called, what it was called, but that's what he did. Because there was a weight in the bottom. And so he'd go, Whoa, and then come right back up. Though I fall, I shall arise. Just, we just get back up. We just get back up. You want to frustrate the devil? Get back up. Just get back up. Hallelujah. So, he says, listen, I've given you the whole armor of God so that you might be able to stand against the works, the wiles, and the strategies of the devil. Imagine him. He, he studies you. We just watched Fast Furious 10, and, and the, the bad guy studied for years um, to put this plan together 
um, against the Fast and Furious crew. And so, anyways, I'm just thinking about that. The, the devil can spend a lot of time studying you. And then he begins to pick, pick on your weaknesses. Pick on, pick on those areas that aren't strengths. He'll pick on that. Works wild strategies. But God has given you armor. So you can stand. And if you fall, you get back up. But imagine the devil spending all this time strategizing to get you. And in just a little bit of time, matter of fact, you can stand. He spends all this time and he doesn't even knock you down. How frustrating is that? Well, remember we talked about, the, we're talking about healing, healing month, the woman with the issue of blood. Twelve years. Nothing got better. Matter of fact, it had gotten worse. She heard about Jesus. She went and she said over and over and over. She began to speak and declare, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I will be whole. Finally, it got to the point where I can't, it's not enough just to say it anymore. I need to take action. I need to put some boots to the pavement. Boom, boom. She comes to Jesus, touches the hem of his garment. He's not even having a healing service. He's not even, there's not even a healing line. He's not praying for anybody. He hasn't, he doesn't call her out of the crowd. She just kind of sneaks up behind, touches him, boom, in a second, a millisecond. What does Mark Hankins call it? What's that? Explosion? The bomb? Whatever. There's, there's, a nanosecond. I don't know what it was. Anyways, there's, it's, it's one millionth of a millionth of a second or something like that. Just that fast. Boom! She felt in her body she was healed. All this time, 12 years, the devil's been working on trying to kill her. And then just a boom that fast, she got healed. Imagine how frustrating that is to the devil. All that work, and it's gone in that moment of time. It's the same thing. We can frustrate the devil. He's given us armor so we can stand against the works, the wiles, and his strategies. He can strategize all he wants. We've got God. We've got armor. And it's his plan that we stand. Amen? And if we fall, we arise. Hallelujah. And we learn. So we can stand. So we can stand. Amen? Hallelujah. So, he said, listen. Be strong in the Lord and the authority of of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Why? So that you are able to stand. I tell you what, we don't even have to fall. We don't even have to fall. He says, put on the whole armor of God. Why? So that you can stand. Standing is his, standing is his desire. Standing is his plan. Standing is our destiny. We've been designed to stand. We've been created to stand. Amen? Glory to God. Glory to God. So get standing as your vision. Get standing as your, your the, the, you see that. See yourself standing. See yourself standing. Hallelujah. Verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So, so this is not a people fight. Right? This is not a people fight. It says, people are not our problem. People that are our problem, that's not the root. They're not the root of the problem. Okay? People, people, may, people may be a problem, <laughs> but they're not the problem. There is a root. The root of the problem is the devil and his forces. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So the word wrestle in the Greek here means this. It means to vibrate or sway. Uh, it means to hold down with your hand upon his neck. To wrestle. And when I think about vibrate, I think about, you know, um, washboard roads. You know, and you hit them too fast. And because the road is curved, um, um, you automatically start heading towards the ditch. Right? You just vibrate. 
Or, I mean, if you got your speaker and you play it loud and you've got something sitting on top of the speaker, the vibration over the process of time will, will move stuff. Um, vibrate. And that's, that's what we do to the devil. We will, we, will, we will vibrate. We will knock him out of the way. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood. But, but, but there is a wrestling going on. Uh, there is this vibration. There is this swaying. There, there is this holding our hand upon the neck. I, I, I like in the book of Joshua. Um, Joshua had uh, some of his uh, leaders come when they caught some uh, of the enemy. Had called his leaders to come and said, uh, put, your, put your foot on their neck. Put your foot on their neck. Before he killed them, he had them all come put their foot on these king's neck. He said, I want you to get this vision. You are victorious. I want you to get this vision. You are victorious. You are the head and not the tail. You are above only, not beneath. I want you to get this vision. And we see here, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but there is a wrestling match. In other words, we are to be putting our hand upon the neck of the enemy. We are to be putting our foot. We're going to read this scripture, but he said we're to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. In other words, we are to put our foot on the devil in his crowd. Hallelujah. There is a wrestling match, but it's not against people. And then he says, this is, this, is, this is what we're wrestling against. We don't wrestle against people, but, but we do wrestle against something. We are wrestling against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Now, this is Satan's demonic force. Uh, this is rank. This is ranking in the, the, well, the forces of darkness. So the principalities are the, the, the weakest or the lowest in rank. And then there are the, the powers. Uh, and, and so then it goes on to the rulers of the darkness of this age. And then the highest ranking is the um, uh, uh, spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. And so... The heavenly places being space, I mean the atmosphere. And, and they have influence over a, a, an, an area. And then they, a, they give, they give um, instruction to the rulers of the darkness who then rule over the powers and then who exercise authority over the principalities. Verse 13, therefore, since we're not wrestling against people, we're wrestling against demonic forces. Now, I, I should say this, and I said this before, we are not wrestling from a place of trying to defeat the devil. Jesus has already done that for us. So our wrestling is to exercise our authority. Our wrestling is our exercising our authority. It is doing what? It's to be strong in the Lord and the authority of his might. That's what this wrestling is about. Uh, we're letting them know what they can and cannot do. Right? Uh, we don't just let the devil do whatever he wants to do. No, we, we are wrestling. We are exercising our authority. We're putting our hands on his neck saying, no, you're not doing not, nothing. Not, none of that here. None of that here. Amen? Exercising our authority. He said, for put on the whole armor of God, verse 13, so that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand. So he says, listen, take the whole armor of God. He said, he's repeating himself. He says, verse 11, take the whole armor of God so that you can stand against the works, the wiles, the strategies of the devil. Verse 13, now listen, I want you to see. Therefore, take the, up the whole armor of God. The key to our functioning, operating in this wrestling match is that we must be clothed in the armor of God. You know, wrestlers wear a certain kind of clothing. If you watch a wrestling match, um, one of my um, entrepreneur mentors um, wrestled, wrestled in high school and college and, and became a, a state champ. And I'm not sure if he went all the way to the... Um, uh, Nationals, but um, 
I think he went there, but I don't remember the result. But wrestling, I didn't like wrestling. Wrestling to me was boring. Ugh, it's just like... So there was another, another friend of mine in phys ed, and we were, we were the, basically the two tallest guys in our class, and uh, his name was Brian, and, and so it was our turn to wrestle, and, and it's like neither of us were really interested. And so I said, okay, you do the first move, I'll do the second move, and you do the first move. And so it, you know, we're, down, we're down, and you blew the first move, and I do the second move, and whatever. And the teacher finally said, would you guys get serious? <laughs> it's like, nah, this is boring. Well, one of the young guys, one of the, his name was Steve, he, he actually liked wrestling. And so I was put up with him, and, and so, you know, I'm just kind of going through the motions. And, and so then he picked me up and did the twirl thing, and, and um, it's like, ooh, you know, it's like, whatever. I, I, it, was, it was just boring to me. Anyways, wrestling. Wrestling. He said, listen, put on the whole armor of God. There, there is a cloth. There, you know, so if you're doing it, you, there, you have this helmet and you, you got this, you know, the wrestlers. Not in phys ed. Phys ed, we just wore our regular phys ed clothes. But I mean, if you're, if you're on the wrestling team, there, there's certain clothes that you wear because you want flexibility, you want lightness, you want, you know, whatever it must be. It just, you know, you don't want, and it was like a onesie, a onesie type thing. Why? Because you don't want your shirt coming off or you don't want, you don't want a handle. You, don't, you want to be able to, to get your grips and do your moves and everything and and uh, so it's, anyways, we got clothing. We are in a wrestling match, and there is some specific clothing that guarantees our standing and our winning. It's called the armor of God. The armor of God. Amen. Put on the whole armor of God. He just repeats himself again. Why? So that you might be able to withstand in the evil day. When's the evil day? The evil day is the day of attack. The evil day is the day of pressure. The evil day is a day when, you know what, this is not a fun day. Fighting the good fight of faith and the believing battle is not a fun day. It's not a party day. It's not a relaxed day. It's not a vacation day. No, it's a fight day. It's a wrestling day. It's a day when effort must be done, put forward, when all of a sudden we must get aggressive. You don't win a fight, but remember, remember I told you the story about, you know, Abraham Lincoln and his town, there was, there was the, the, the guy that had the little dog and always whipped all the big dogs? Why? Because the big dogs, the big dogs didn't even know they were in the fight until it was half over. We do not want to be a people like the big dogs. Well, we're just kind of smiling and just kind of going through life and don't even know we're in a battle and we're being beaten up. And then all of a sudden, you know, Life is half over, or we're half beaten up, or we're laid out on the ground, and it dawns on us. Ah, oh, I must have been in a fight. Huh? That's not, that's not, no, the little dog, the, the, so the, the owner was asked, how come does your little dog always beats all the big dogs? And he said, because my dog stays mad. What does that mean? That, that does not mean we're supposed to be mad, it just means that we're supposed to always be on guard. Always on guard. Amen? We don't let the devil get away with anything. We don't let the devil get away with anything. We see him walking up the street. We go, I got eyes on you. You're not going to sneak in. No, there's no sneaking. I see you. No. Amen? We give him no place. Hallelujah. We're very aware. The fight's not half over. No, no, no. You want to get in a fight? We're going to be, we're going to be ready. That comes with training. Comes with training. We've got a friend of ours who's in heaven now. But he took, I think he took karate or took martial arts when he was younger because he was short. He didn't like being made fun of. Or maybe it was just identity. He had an issue with being short. And, uh, but one day he's walking down the street and this piece of cardboard, the wind blew a piece of cardboard out of the alley and he, he killed the cardboard. You know, he reacted and it scared him, he said, um, because if it was a real person, he could have hurt someone. Why? Because he trained. And so it was second nature. He, he, he responded without thinking. 
responded without thinking. That's, that's, how, that's how people die, when, when people just have a gun and they respond without thinking. So when you're in the military, you, you train. You train how to use the gun. And I found out, you know, um, their, their finger's never on the trigger. Their finger is around, around the trigger, but it's not on the trigger. So you're not actually accidentally shooting anyone, shooting yourself, shooting your, your, you know, your, your company members. Um, no, their finger is there, but it's not on the trigger. They train. They train. They train. And so we as the body of Christ, we, we, ought, to be, we ought to be training, learning, functioning, operating. How? Training how to walk in love. Training how to walk in forgiveness. Training how to put on the whole armor of God. Training how to recognize the works, the wiles, and the strategies of the devil. Training how to use the sword of the Spirit. Amen? Against the, excuse me, against the devil. Training. So we don't actually slice ourselves or slice a family member. Oh, excuse me, I apologize. You know? We're just shooting arrows with our words and uh, it was like, you know, just spouting off and saying stuff. I just, I, I, I just, I was just so mad. I just, I didn't know what I was saying. So, so, so we just decided to shoot everyone with our arrows and then we have to go, oh, I apologize. It's much better to be trained and not just shoot everybody. Not just spout off and have to apologize. Train. So we shoot the enemy and we keep our friends and family and those alive. Amen? It's just, this, is not a, this is not a people fight. So we're dealing with the devil, not people. We can deal with the devil and love people. We can deal with the devil and forgive people. <laughs> Amen? Hallelujah. So, so take up the whole armor of God so you can withstand in the evil day. Stand. Withstand. Victory. And then he says, having done all to stand. Now my cross-reference in my King James says this, having overcome all to stand. And that's what it means. Not just having done all. I, I just, I just did, did everything I could do to stand, but I, I'm, I didn't. I didn't. No, no, that's not. This is not. I'm just, I'm doing all I can to stand, and, and, and I didn't. No, this, this word means having overcome all to stand. In other words, having overcome all, every work, while strategy of the devil, having overcome every single one of them, and you're still standing, now what do you do? Stand. We're clothed in the armor of God so we can stand. And then overcoming every work, while strategy, and attack of the enemy in the evil day. See, when the evil day comes, it's an attack day. And so having done everything to overcome in that evil day, the attack day, the battle day, the fight day, having overcome everything and you're still standing, what do you do? You just keep standing. You stand there. When all the dust settles, you're standing and you've got a big smile on your face. Why? Because you are victorious. You are triumphant. You are the victorious one. You are the overcomer. Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. Amen? We are more than conquerors through Him. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And so He's designed us to stand, to win, to overcome. And so having overcome every, every attack, and we're still standing... Stay standing with a smile on your face, giving glory and praise and honor to God, because we're what? Strong in the Lord and the power of His might. If we fall, get back up and move forward. Continue on. If we fall, go back to one. Start over. Amen? It's not over. Start over. Put on the whole armor of God. Stand. Overcome every obstacle. Stand. Having done all... To overcome, stand. Stand. Do what? Keep the armor on. Why? Because there's another battle coming. You don't win one battle and then take the, take the armor off and go hang it up and go, whew, well, that was a close one. 
And he said, stand, stand. Verse 14, stand. Having overcome all to stand, stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your loins, put on the belt of truth on your waist. Having it, having it, just keep it on. Keep it on. Putting on the breastplate of righteousness, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, keep it on. And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel peace, keep the peace of God on you. Above all, above all, above everything else, listen, take the shield of faith. Because the shield of faith is what you will be able to quench every fiery dart of the wicked one. Shield of faith. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And then pray always with all kinds of prayer. Hallelujah. So what do we see here? We see, listen, he said, be strong in the Lord and His authority. Be strong in the Lord and His authority. It said, this is not a fight with people. That's what we found out here. He said that we are to withstand. We're to be clothed and cloaked in the armor of God so we can withstand and, 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 and do all. Overcome every attack of the enemy, every worthwhile strategy, every attack of the enemy to stand. And having done all to stand, having overcome every obstacle, every attack to stand, just keep standing. God wants us to stand. He's repeating himself over and over. Standing is what he wants us to do. Stand. Stand. And so we are to stay clothed in the armor of God. So that's my introduction. So now I want to, let's talk about the word authority. Since he said, listen, be strong in the Lord and in the authority of his might. Let's just talk a little bit about authority. Let's go to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. We're going to talk about authority. Luke chapter 10. We need to be strong in the Lord and the authority of his might. We need to understand our authority. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. He said, Behold, I give you the authority. To tread or trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Jesus speaking, he has said he has given us authority. Authority. Say, I have authority. I have kingdom authority. Hallelujah. We have authority. To tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. So serpents and scorpions are just, um, they, they represent the demonic forces, right? The principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of the world and, and uh, the wicked heavenly, uh, wickedly forces in the heavenly places. So that's, that, that's what they ju that just represents. He's not literally telling us, I want you to go trample on serpents and scorpions. Uh, he's just saying, listen, um, you know what? In the natural, we don't do that. Um, so I want to let you know that um, these things represent Satan and his forces. I've given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. All the power. Say all. Not just few. Not just half. Not just the, not just the principalities. Right? Not just the, 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 the low-level devils. All. All. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Say nothing. nothing. Whoo! Isn't that good news? Nothing. Nothing. Hallelujah. That's how David functioned. David functioned. The battles that he had. You know, you know when, when, when the popular song was Saul killed his thousands and David killed his ten thousands, you know, on the radio. That was the popular song. And it really kind of irked, irked the king. Um... That's a lot of people. That's a lot of battles. Uh, and he was never harmed. 
Tread on serpents, scorpions, and all over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. He recognized who he was. He recognized who his God was. You know, and, 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 and as a teenager, you know, he killed the lion and the bear, protecting his dad's sheep. And then when Goliath shows up and everyone's scared and hiding behind rocks and trees and stuff like that, he shows up and the first thing comes out of his mouth is, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who does he think he is? If he's uncircumcised, then I actually know that I'm circumcised, so I actually, I, actually, I actually understand and recognize I have a covenant with Almighty God. And if I have a covenant with Almighty God, the, 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 there is no win-win. This is all win-lose. I win, he loses. <laughs> that's, that's all there is. You know? I win, he loses. He should have minded his own business. He should have stayed at home. But the moment he decided to diss the, diss the armies of Israel and diss the God of Israel, he stepped over the line. He should have just, he should have just stayed at home this morning. But no, 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 no. He just, he just had to come over and talk the way he talked and just kind of push us. He stepped over the line. Right? We ought to make the devil just wish that he didn't, he didn't, he didn't come in our neighborhood. He didn't come in our yard. He said, yeah, that's a bad idea. Make him think twice about dealing with you. Why? Because you're strong in the Lord and the power of his might. You're clothed in the armor of God. He has no idea who's inside that armor. That armor of light is so bright. Just keep the face plate down. He doesn't know who's in there. Because the last guy that, did, that was wearing that whipped him bad. Jesus, clothed in the armor of God, literally brought Je the Satan to naught. Conquered him, defeated him. Oh yeah, he'll remember that the rest of his life. He said, listen, this is, this is my plan for you. I give you authority to trample Tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I'm give, I have given you authority to put your hand on the enemy's neck. I've given you authority to put your foot on the enemy's neck. I've given you authority in your life. Amen? Say my life. So you have authority in your life. You have limited authority, right? When your kids are young, you have authority in their lives. As they get older, your authority is um, limited. Gets less and less. Why? Because at some point, they now have authority in their lives. So your authority cannot override their authority in their lives. We all have authority in our own lives. And then, um, you know what? We can pray for other nations and other things, but, but, but we actually have more authority to pray for our own nation. And we have more authority to pray for our own town and city. We can pray for other towns and cities, um, but our authority is limited. But, but we have more authority to pray for our own town and city. Why? Because I live there. We live there. We have a right to be here. I have a, a right to pray. I have a right to tell the devil no, right? So, so the, the, we need to understand our authority. Our authority, right? Police officers can't just go arrest everyone all over the world. No, they have a jurisdiction. They have an authority. And it functions and operates where they have jurisdiction. Where they don't have jurisdiction, they're just a regular person. We must understand our jurisdiction. Amen? It's a good idea. That'll answer some questions about why some things work and why some things don't. We might be trying to do some stuff that's outside our jurisdiction. Or we might be trying to exercise our authority over someone that we don't have any authority over. Right? If we have employees, we've got some, we've got some, we've got some jurisdiction to pray for our employees. We've got some enjoy, authority to pray over our grandkids. We've got some authority. But again, it's limited. Why? Because they have a right to make their own choices. But we have a right to pray for them. There we have, we have limited authority, so let's use it. Amen? Hallelujah, don't give up. So we have authority over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt us. So we must exercise our authority. Let's go to Romans chapter 5. 
Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5 and verse 17 says this. For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, that's talking about Adam, much more, say much more. We need to understand much more. Much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness, and I think the Amplified says the free gift of righteousness, will reign, and the Amplified Classic says this, shall reign as kings in life through one, Jesus Christ. So just as death reigned and came on all of humanity because of Adam's sin, but the much more, much more. What, God, what the devil did in Adam is much less than what Jesus, God did through Jesus. Let me say it this way. What God did through Jesus is much more powerful than what the devil did through Adam. Much more. Much more. Hallelujah. Those who receive... Much more, those who receive the abundance of grace and of the free gift of righteousness will reign as kings in life through one. We are to reign as kings through one Jesus Christ. This is, this is, this is a picture of our exercising our authority, living and exercising our authority. We are reigning as kings in life, our life. Amen? We are to reign. We are to rule and to reign in our life as kings. Hallelujah. The devil is not to reign. Situation and circumstances are not to reign in our life. No, we are to reign in our life. How? By being strong in the Lord and the power of his might. The authority of his might. Exercising our authority to rule and to reign in life through one Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It's our responsibility to reign in our lives. That's a good point. So, since we're talking about healing month, we need to understand this. God has done everything he is ever going to do about your and my healing. God has already done Everything he's going to do about your healing and my healing. He's not going to do anything more. All our praying and all our begging and all our wishing things would change. He's he's done everything already. There is nothing more he can do. There's nothing more he's going to do. He's done it all. He sent Jesus. By his stripes we were healed. Jesus bore our sicknesses, carried our diseases. He was made to be a curse for us so that the blessing of Abraham might come on us because of Jesus. He's done everything. He sent his word and healed us. He's he's done everything. Jesus has already secured a complete redemption for us by the shedding of his blood. What does that mean? That means he's done everything already. In other words, if nothing's changed... It's our responsibility because we have been given authority to rule and reign in our lives as kings through one Jesus Christ. We must rule and reign in our life. It's not begging God to do something more. He's already done it all. If we do not rule and reign in our life, nothing will change. Hmm. Hmm. Authority. We are to tread on serpents and scorpions no more all the power of the enemy in order to get results. We are to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. When the evil day, when the battle day shows up, we better have our armor on. We better know how to use it. And we better take our attack stance. We need need to be able to use the sword. We need to be able to use the name. We need to be able to use, amen, the word of God. We need to be able to apply the blood. We need to be able to praise and rejoice. We need to be able to use the weapons of our warfare because they're mighty through God. 
They're mighty through God. Hallelujah. Really? Oh, how did you? Look at that. Hallelujah. We are, <laughs> we are to rule and reign as kings in our life through one. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. God lets us know right off the bat. Right off the bat. Thank you, my love. I think I actually turned it right off. But that volume was so quiet, I was waiting for the motorcycle to go vroom, vroom, and I was like, hey, you're not even making any sound. What's... I got the... Ten minutes. I got... We'll give it five minutes. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, says this. These are the first words human ears ever heard. God speaking, verse 28. Genesis 1, 28. Then God blessed them and said... What did He say? Be fruitful multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. God said, listen, I want you to be fruitful. Now, I'm going to have to, I'm not going to explain a whole lot here, but listen, I want you, he said, I want you to be fruitful. I want you to multiply. I want you to increase. I want you to be productive. Just because my time is, is running out, and I've got one more scripture to go to. Um, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this. But this is, this is, he said, listen, I want you to be fruitful, productive, increase. I want you to multiply. I want you to subdue and have dominion. Subdue and have dominion. This, this, is, this, is, this has always been God's plan for us. I want you to be fruitful. I want you to be productive. I want you to increase. I want you to multiply. And this is not just talking about babies. This is, this is way beyond babies. He wants our life to be productive. Our lives to be fruitful, productive. Not when we get to the end of the life and go, boy, I'm glad that's over. No, fruitful, productive, where we're fulfilled because we're producing something, we're accomplishing something, we're doing something. We're multiplying, we're increasing. We're filling or we're for fulfilling. We're subduing. Whatever our call and our assignment is, we, we subdue in that area. We, we, we become a category king. We become, we become um, the go-to person in that area. When people think of such and such, they ought to be thinking about us. We're, we're subduing. We're, we're having dominion. We're, um, we're dominating. God's plan has always been for us. To be the head and not the tail above only not beneath. Hallelujah. It's not for the world to have dominion, to dominate, to own all the television stations, and, 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 and all of a sudden uh, Christians uh, have to always go uh, borrow money and, and raise money so, so we can go on their television stations and, and, and have to um, beg to say what we want to say and they tell us what we can and cannot do. No, no, we're to be the ones who have dominion. That's just one area. But we ought to have dominion. Amen? If we want to have a store that does such and such, and they're not letting us do it as an employee, then we ought to have dominion. We ought to be able to go buy our own store and do what we want to do. Sell what we want to sell. Serve the people on a higher level. Amen? Dominion. Where they come to us and go, oh, I, you know, I want to work for you. Amen? Dominion. Dominion. When they need prayer, they know who to go to. He said, be fruitful, multiply, increase, fill the earth, subdue, and have dominion. Let's close with Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, no, 16. 
Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19. Matthew 16, verse 19. Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, Jesus said this, And I give you the keys of the kingdom. That's authority. I give you keys of the kingdom. I'm giving you authority. I'm giving you the keys of the kingdom, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. One translation says this, whatever you allow will be allowed and whatever you disallow will be disallowed. This is called ruling and reigning in our life as kings. This is called exercising our authority. Amen? Whatever we allow in our lives, you know, the devil shows up, it's that evil day, it's battle day, fight day. And if we just allow the devil to do whatever he wants to do, he will be allowed. God is not going to jump in and go, hey, 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 what's the matter with you? Leave my kid alone. No. He's given us authority to rule and reign in our life, to subdue and have dominion. He's told us to trade on serpents and scorpions. He's told us to rule and reign as kings through one. In our life, through one Jesus Christ. He said, whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever we allow will be allowed. Whatever we disallow will be disallowed. Exercise our authority in our own lives. Let the devil know what he can and cannot do. What he can and cannot do. Allow and disallow. Right? Loose the ministering angels. Bind the demonic forces. Satan, shut up. I cast those thoughts down. Satan, I bind you in the forces of darkness over my family. Amen. Ministering angels, go. I loose you. Bring the money in. Influence the people to come to church. I choose to walk in love. I choose to walk in forgiveness. See, we have authority. Whatever we allow will be allowed, and whatever we disallow will be disallowed. God has given us authority in our lives. So it's very important that we learn to exercise that authority, because He's not going to do it for us. Amen? A good business owner, if they give someone authority over a certain area in the business... They don't jump in there and micromanage. They don't jump in there and um, try to make something happen. They've been given authority. So now if it fails, we will go sit, set aside some time and we'll talk about what was not done. So it doesn't fail anymore. Right? Authority. We have authority in our lives. Say, I have authority, authority. in my life. Thank you, Lord. Amen.